Okay, hello everyone and welcome to my third video on the binary bomb. Um, in this video we're going to go over the second phase. So let's uh, let's just get started. <clears throat> Alright, now if you remember, our input for the first phase was pretty long. And we're not going to want to type in that every single time we run the program. So what you're going to want to do is uh, a text editor. There's a couple of text editors out there. There's Nano, there's BI, there's uh, what's the other one? Emacs. Um, uh, VI is pretty cool because it's color coded. Um, I've never really used Emacs before. Uh, Nano is pretty simple, so let's just use Nano. So you're going to want to type in Nano. Okay, here's your text editor. And let's just type in uh, the input for first phase, which was I was trying to give Tina Fey more material. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there you go, with period. So make sure you get that right. Uh, type in Control X to exit. Now it's going to ask you if you want to save it. Uh, type in Y for yes. And let's save it as answers.txt. Now I already have a file called, or uh, I, have a, I already have a file named answers.txt. So it's probably going to ask me if I want to overwrite. Uh, let's just type in yes. Okay. Cool. So if you type in ls, you're going to see it's right there. Answers.txt. All right. So let's get to it. Clear all of this. You, uh, just type in clear, then enter. Okay, now let's use GDB, which is our debugger, and you type in the name of your bomb. And in this case, the name of my bomb is just bomb. So type in enter. All right. Now we're going to want to set a breakpoint at phase two. So just type in B phase two, and um, and then we're going to want to run the program. However, we're going to want to run the program uh, with our answers.txt file. So you type in r answers.txt, you hit enter, and as you can see, here's the welcome string, and here's the phase one diffused string. Okay, that way we don't have to type in, you know, the I was trying to give Tina Fey more material, you know, that way we don't have to type that every single time we run the program. So that's good. So now, right now, it's asking us for, um, for the second input or our our answer for the second phase, All right? So we don't really know what it is. So let's just type "I like bacon," okay? All right. So now we type in the SAS, which disassembles the assembly code. Now it's gonna do a bunch of stuff here, like it's gonna subtract some stuff. It's gonna load couple of stuff into EAX, move things around. Okay, we don't really care too much about that. What we want to do is we want to look at the compare statements and oh wait, before we get to the compare statement, there's a function here called read six numbers. Um, I don't want to take too long on this, but uh, let's see. If we go to next instruction, next instruction several times, we're eventually going to get to read six numbers okay now if we step into it right you're gonna see right here that we're now in the six or read six numbers function okay so let's just skip all of this and we do that whoops uh, we do that by typing in until asterisk and then the address of uh, wherever it is you want to go. So let's just type that one in because we want to see if um, if we really do need uh, six numbers for our input. Okay. Remember our input right now it's is uh, I like bacon, which is just it's uh, it's a string. So let's just uh, let's type that in. Let's disassemble one more time. Okay. Now. Now it, it uh, there's a compare statement here where it compares EAX to five. Okay, if EAX is greater than five, then it's going to jump to seventy-seven, which uh, where it'll then just leave the function. If 
our input is incorrect, it's um, it's just going to call this explode bomb function. Okay, so let's see if it does that. Yep, here we go. It's in the explode bomb function. So, so let's just quit. All right, and let's clear all of that. <clears throat> all right, so we know that uh, what we need are six numbers and you know no characters. Okay, so let's just type in GDB bomb one more time. Set a breakpoint at phase two. Okay, now we're going to want to run again uh, the, uh, the answers.txt file. Okay, uh, welcome to my right phase one diffused. All right, now it's going to ask us for the, uh, the input for the second phase. So let's just type in six numbers. Just type in one through six. I wouldn't type in six ones because then when you're um, when you're looking at the compare statements, you don't know which digit is which. If that makes any sense, or which input is which. So you're not going to know if if uh, if it's comparing this one to this one. Uh, you know what I mean? Or if uh, or if it's uh, six twos, you don't know if it's going to compare this two to this two, so I just recommend typing in one through six. So once you once you do that, you're going to want to type in enter. Okay, let's disassemble the code. Uh, again, it's going to subtract some stuff there. It's going to load stuff to EAX, blah, blah, blah. All right, now let's just skip all the way to this compare statement down here. If everything goes as planned, uh, then um, it should um, go into read six numbers and um, you know without calling that a explode bomb function. So let's just see if it does that. Let's let's go ahead and type in until. All right, and it did. It's it's comparing a couple of things here. It's comparing uh, something to one. Okay, and I'm going to tell you right now that the first input, or the first digit, should be 1. And um, in our input, our, our input is 1, so that's right. Uh, let's see. Let's see, uh, compare. Okay. Now we're going to go to next instruction, next instruction. It's going to load a couple of things into e EVX, it's going to load some stuff into ESI. Don't worry about any of that. Um, notice how we skipped the explode bomb, okay? So uh, what happened here was it was comparing something to 1, and if this was equal to, okay, again, if it was equal to 1, then it'll jump straight to 37. So that's a big clue right there. Our first input has to be one. Okay, so let's just continue. That's it. Next instruction, next instruction, um, next instruction. There's a um, there's a line of code right here that's very interesting. It, it's adding EAX to itself. <laughs> <clears throat> adding EAX to itself. So you're going to want to type in IR, which stands for Info Register. Um, here we get all the information <clears throat> on all the registers. So here we can see that EAX is equal to 1. So when it adds 1 to 1, or EAX to EAX, it's going to give you 2. And it's going to compare EBX, which is, let's just see what EBX is. EBX is some weird number. Um, okay, so to find out what EBX is, you're going to want to type in X slash D, and then um, whatever is in EBX. So it's comparing uh, uh, 2, which is EBX, to 1, which is EAX. Okay, so, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, um, if they're equal, it'll jump to 57. If it's not equal, then it'll just call explode bomb. 
should it, it should not wait sorry should not call explode bomb but let's just see what happens okay now again it's uh, ebx eax so again let's just check that eax just changed to two you see there's a couple of things going on here okay so make sure you use ir very very frequently okay so that's that Load bomb. All right. Cool. Shouldn't explode. It should skip up over to 57, and it does. It adds a couple of things to EBX. I'll tell you right now that um, that there's a loop going on here. Okay. So it's going to compare EBX to e ESI, and if EBX is not equal to ESI, that's what JNE stands for, jump, if not equal, and it'll jump to 43. And it's going to do like this weird thing, you know, like this, just this loop. Okay, and you have to look at this add uh, uh, statement right here where it adds EAX to EAX. There's a pattern going on. Okay, now remember our input was one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, you'll see that three will not be valid and it's actually going to call the explode bomb. And I'll show you right now. Okay, it's going to add EAX to EAX. Okay, if you take a look at the compare statements. You see, uh, it's going to call explode bomb. Why did it call explode bomb? Well, it was supposed to jump to 57, right? But it didn't. So why didn't it jump to 57? Well, let's just see. It's comparing. Um, let's see. It's comparing <clears throat> EBX to EAX. Jump if equal, and we want it to jump. But we want it to jump to 57. So here it says. If EBX is equal to EAX, then jump. So they're not equal. So let's just check what's inside of each. Again, it's comparing EBX to EAX. EAX is 4. Okay. And EBX is... Let's see what EBX is. It's 3. Where did 4 come from? I don't know. Three, where did that come from? That most likely came from our input. So it's comparing three, which is part of our input, to four, which is most likely the answer. So let's see. One, two, and four. Um, you could keep running this code, and, and you could keep looking at the assembly code and the statements and all that. Or you could just see the pattern that's going on here. One, two, uh, four, right? Now, if we go back and we look at this add statement, it's adding EAX to EAX. So it's adding it to itself. So 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. What's 4 plus 4? 8. What's 8 plus 8? 16. And 16 plus 16 is 32. Why do we stop at 32? Because there you go, that's six digits, or the that six numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so let's just go ahead and try that. We're going to quit. Okay, we're going to want to clear all of this. And let's just run GDB one more time, okay? Uh, set a breakpoint at phase two. Um, again, you, you don't have to set a breakpoint. Actually, yeah, you, you kind of do, just in case you want to disassemble the assembly code. Anyway, so run answers.txt. There you go, phase one diffused. And let's just type in what we think the answer might be. Whoops, uh, that's 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 2, 4, 4 plus 4, 8, 8 plus 8, 16, and 16 plus 16 is 32. Remember that add statement, how 
EAX is adding, or uh, it was adding EAX to EAX. Okay, so that's how we got this. Again, if you have any questions, just feel free to message me or create a video response to this one. All right, so we type in enter. Oops, uh, created a uh, <laughs> a breakpoint. I forgot. Okay, so let's just uh, let's disassemble real quick. We want to see if it goes all the way to the end of the uh, of the function. So let's just type in until. Okay, and uh, disassemble again. But look, it uh, it didn't call any of the explode bombs. Now there's a couple of ex explode bomb functions in here. Remember, there's one in read six numbers. There's another one here, and here, and look, it just it skipped over all of them. So I'm very sure that that is the answer. Uh, there's nothing that could go wrong. Okay, so if we go to next instruction, here we go. Phase diffused. All right. Now, if you still don't believe me, we could uh, we could just run uh, just run it. Oops, we don't really have to run it in GDB, but let's just let's run it anyway. Our um, don't set any breakpoints. Answers.txt. Phase 1 diffused. Okay, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. All right. There you go. That's number 2. Keep going. Excellent. So we found the answer to phase 2. Uh, I think I took about, what, 15 minutes? This video might be two parts. However, uh, we finally got the uh, the second phase diffused. Again, if you have any questions on this, feel free to message me. Uh, if there was something that was confusing or something that I just didn't explain, again, just uh, send me a message or make uh, create a video response to this one, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks.